Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Christine Graham. As Deputy Presiding Officer of the Scottish Parliament, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you here into the heart of our wonderful building on a wonderful day for the 10th annual EuroQuiz final. I'd like to offer a particularly warm welcome to our finalists on the floor of the debating chamber and to their other friends, families and fellow pupils seated in the public gallery. I know you've travelled from all over the country to be here today, from Murray in the north to my own constituency of Melrose in the south, but I'm not one of the judges, so there won't be any prejudice here, and just about everywhere in between, so I hope you're all prepared and ready to go. This event today is being webcast live on our website, and I understand that some of your schoolmates, as well as many of the pupils who have taken part in this year's EuroQuiz, are watching this final back in their classrooms. So welcome to all of you and thank you for joining us today. And finally, a big thank you to all the pupils and schools which have taken part in this year's EuroQuiz. The competition really does go from strength to strength and this is down in no small part to the enthusiasm and participation of you all. Joining me in the running of the quiz today is Cooley Nook uh, from the Office of the European Commission in Scotland and she'll be hearing from her very shortly. We're also joined by John Mulgrew, Chairman of the Scottish European Education Trust. That's the people who organise this quiz. And I'm pleased to say that John will be presenting some prizes later to our winning finalists, along with my MSP colleague, Gil Patterson. There they are in the front row. But before we make a start, I'd like to read out the names of all our finalists. So to help our camera operators, when I read out your school name, can I ask that you give us a little wave Remember, this is live on our website, so it'll be on YouTube for a long time to come. <laughs> and if you like, you could even smile. So here we go, Albin School. Where's Albin School? There we are, Albin School. Give them a wee clap. <laughs> Air, Air Grammar Primary. There we are. Calderwood Lodge Primary. There we are. <laughs> Cumley Park Primary. With some kind of wild beast I see in front. Crown Primary. Where are you? Where's Crown Primary? Can't see you. Where are you? Oh, there you are. You're very shy. Yes. ESMS Junior School. There they are. Fort Hill Primary School. <laughs> Greenwards Primary School. <laughs> he looks friendlier, friendlier than that one. Gillen Primary School. <laughs> oh, <laughs> another one. Houston Primary School. All the way from America. All the way from America. That's very impressive. Kelvindale Primary School. Kings Park Primary School. <laughs> oh, there you are, there you are, just seen you. Ladybank Primary School. <laughs> Langlands Primary School. <laughs> Lothorn Primary School. <laughs> there they? Oh, there you are. What's that you've got? Is that just a bag or is that something? Oh, well, there you go. Hope it, Melrose Primary School. Well done, Melrose. Mulgai Primary School. Oh. Oh. Is he cold? He's gone blue. Uh, Onthank Primary School. Our Lady of Lourdes Primary School. Port Leithen Primary School. Where are they? Oh, put your hands up so we can see you. Put your hands up, Port Leithen. Didn't quite see you. Redwall Primary School. Oh, see the fan clubs in. St Dominic's RC Primary School. <laughs> That's got them going. St Joseph's Primary. <laughs> There you are, just seen you. St John Ogilvy Primary RC School. Oh, right at the back, hello. 
St. John's Primary. <laughs> St. Mary's, Mary's Primary, and I've got to say it's Duntochter. Where's that? Oh, right at the back. Stornoway Primary. Oh. You've almost come as far as Houston from the States. It's just about as far. Strathblane Primary. Rockets. Tenalt Primary. <laughs> Traqueer Primary. <laughs> And last but not least, Whiteness Primary. <laughs> Where are they? Where's Whiteness? Can I see you? There you are, right to hope. Thank you. Now, I'd first like to read a message from John Swinney, MSP, Deputy First Minister and Cabinet Secretary for Education and Skills, who unfortunately can't be here today. I'll do it in my voice because I don't know how to do his voice. The Euroquiz seeks to create an enthusiasm for learning about the rich and diverse cultures of our Europeans, increasing young people's confidence and the range of skills. With these new skills and knowledge, there'll be new opportunities to shine locally, nationally and globally. As it is an element of language learning, it will also develop our young people's ability to communicate. And this supports the learning about others and the development of active global citizens. That's why the Scottish Government is committed to ensuring that language learning throughout school is normal for all our young people. All the more appropriate during this year of young people that we should shine a light on the fantastic contributions young people make to Scotland and celebrate their achievements. Congratulations, enhorabuena, to everyone who has participated in this year's Euroquiz and in particular to those of you we reached the national final here in the Scottish Parliament. Bon chance, girl my head leave to all the finalists. So it's now with great pleasure that I invite Cooley Newark from the Office of the European Commission in Scotland to give an overview and explanation of how the quiz will run. Listen carefully, she'll say this only once. <laughs> Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, who is also going to be our quiz master today. And hello to everyone from me. I am Kulli Nurk. I am Estonian and I work for the European Commission Office in Scotland. Our Head of Office, office Mr. Graham Blythe, couldn't be here today and he sends his apologies and wishes you all good luck. So it is for me to say welcome everyone and congratulations to you all for making it to the finals. And thank you to all the parents and teachers who have come here to support you today. And I hear we also have one grandparent who has come from Slovakia to w w watch you all here. So shall we all practice our best Slovakian today and say ahoy to the grandfather. Ahoy! <laughs> and and as um, Christine already mentioned, this is broadcast on live, so don't pick your no noses, but you can all wave to your um, people at home and all the other schools, so let's give a big wave to everybody watching remotely. And uh, I'll now take you through what we are doing today. Um, today's EuroQuiz final is made up of three rounds in which you all participate. We will start with round one, which has 20 questions. These will be answered in pairs within your teams and the points added up to give the team score. We will then move on to round two, the language round. This involves 15 questions for teams and during this round you may discuss your answers. The first 10 questions are spoken language questions in German, Spanish, Italian and French followed by five general knowledge language questions. These questions have been developed in partnership, partnership with Education Scotland and SILF, Scotland's National Centre for Languages, and have been recorded by native speakers from Harriet Watt University in Edinburgh. This will be followed by round three, which focuses on history, culture and the European affairs. This round has also 20 questions, and at this stage, you will again be asked to work in pairs with the person sitting next to you. 
points will be added up to give the team score. After each round, I will take you through the correct answers while the papers are being marked. The two teams in the lead at the end of round three will go forward uh, to the final round. Round four has 10 questions for teams, followed by the all-important buzzer questions to decide the overall winning team for Euroquiz 2018. And now, before I hand you back to the quiz master, I would like to say thank you to you two young ladies, Madeline and Jane, who are behind all this and organized and worked really, really hard to make the Euroquiz 2018 happen. Without them, we wouldn't have this. So let's give them a round of applause. And now I hand you back to the quiz master. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Now, this is complicated, so I'll try not to get it wrong. I know you won't. If you're ready, we'll now begin. Round one will be 20 questions for you to answer in pairs. Working with the person next to you, listen to the question. You can then discuss your answer, and one of you should write the answer on the answer sheet. Remember, you're not allowed to confer with the other pair in your team. And remember not to let the other pair in your team or other teams hear what you're saying. I'm sure you won't. You should have two green answer sheets in front of you, one sheet per pair. Write the name of your school at the top and listen carefully to the questions. Please try to spell as well as you can. However, spelling will not count against you as long as the markers can understand what your answer is. I'll read the questions and where it's a multiple choice, I'll read the possible answers. So when there's just one, no multiple choice, I won't be reading any answer or you all get it right. Well, that would be quite good, wouldn't it? Everybody get one right. But I'll read the question and when it's multiple choice, I'll read the, the answers that are possible. But the questions will also appear on the screen behind me. So here's the first question. This is the flag of which EU member state? This is the flag of which EU member state? And no whispering in the gallery. <laughs> right, I'm moving on to question two. What is the name of the highest mountain in the UK? What is the name of the highest mountain in the UK? Am I going too fast or too slow? Is this all right, this pace? Right. What is the capital city of Latvia? What is the capital city of Latvia? bit of conferring going on about that one. Next one. Just put your hand up if I'm going too fast. Please let me know. Where is the Adriatic Sea? Is it A, between France and Spain, B, between Ukraine and Russia, or C, between Italy and Croatia? Where is the Adriatic Sea, between France and Spain, between Ukraine, Ukraine and Russia, or Italy and Croatia. Just tell me when to move on. No. The island of Madeira, a popular tourist resort, belongs to which EU member state? The island of Madeira, a popular tourist resort, belongs to which EU member state? I hear the brains clicking over there. Number six. What is the name of the town in the Northwest Netherlands after which a popular red-coated cheese is named? What is the name of the town in the Northwest Netherlands after which a popular red-coated 
cheese is named. Hope we've got cheese eaters in. A lot of anxious whispering going on here. That's tough, that one. I think that's a tough one. Unless you eat cheese, of course. You look as if you eat cheese. You've got a big smile on your face. <laughs> Number seven, name Europe's busiest passenger port. Number seven, name Europe's busiest passenger port. Right, now move on. Number eight, which European country shares borders with both Russia and Romania? Which European country shares borders with both Russia and Romania? Number nine, what is the approximate population of Sweden? A, 19 million, B, 14 million, or C, 10 million? What is the approximate population of Sweden? A, 19 million, B, 14 million, or C, 10 million? I think they're getting tougher. I think they're getting harder, the questions, yes. That's sneaky. That's sneaky. You put the easy ones at the beginning. We all think we're doing well. Number 10. Which large stretch of water do Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania have in common? I think you'd get this one. Yes. Which large stretch of water do Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania have in common. Number 11. What is the name of this Roman aqueduct in southern France? A. Pont d'Avignon, B. Pont du Gard, C. Pont des Arts. What is the name of this Roman aqueduct in southern France? Pont d'Avignon, Pont du Gard, Pont des Arts. Number 13. The Orsund the Bridge. Oh, I beg your pardon. I've missed number 12, right? I knew I'd go wrong. Ah, it's a wee one at the bottom. 12. This is the flag of which EU member state? This is the flag of which EU member state? I don't know. Don't look at me. I don't know. <laughs> The Orsund, number 13, the Orsund Bridge, a combined railway and motorway bridge, connects Denmark to which country? The Orsund Bridge, a combined railway and motorway bridge, connects Denmark to which country? Hope you're doing these, Mr. Patterson. I'm marking you. Let's see how you get on. <laughs> Okay. They're difficult for everybody, I think, so that's fair. Number 14. What is the capital city of Serbia? What is the capital city of Serbia? Maybe you'll get this one. 15. What is the name of the major river in Ireland which flows through Dublin? What is the name of the major river in Ireland which flows through Dublin? C. 
16. Greenland has its own parliament, but remains financially dependent on which European country? Greenland has its own parliament, but remains financially dependent on which European country? too fast now. 17. Constantinople was the capital of the Roman Empire from 330 to 1204 AD and from, I think that must be wrong. What's that? I can't read it, so I don't know what it says. What is the city known as today? Anyway, Constantinople was the capital city of the Roman Empire from 330 to 1204 AD What's this city known as today? It's up on the board anyway, if I can't read it. Oh, I didn't know it was down there. Oh, I've got it all down there. Oh, that's good. Now I see it. Now you tell me. <laughs> I knew that answer, by the way. It's about the only one I knew. 18. What is the name of the principality located in the Pyrenees? What is the name of the principality located in the Pyrenees? <laughs> and that's that finished once I get to that. That's the end of the round at 20. 19. Which European country is bordered by Austria, Croatia, Hungary, and Italy? Which European country is bordered by Austria, Croatia, Hungary, and Italy? Is that a question? Is there a question? All right, I'm with you. I don't even understand some of the questions. This is my difficulty. Right, number 20. This is the euro coin used by which EU state? This is the euro coin used by which EU state? Is that it? You ready? Okay, that's great. Can I now ask the teachers who are doing the marking to collect the answer papers, please? And you can have a wee chat while we're collecting the papers. Let them have a wee break. Right now, please, attention, because here comes the moment of truth. This is when Cooley Nurt comes to the lectern and tells you the answers. How was that? Easy? So, so. Okay, let's look together. Question number one. What was, which country is this? Tell me. Poland. Correct. Second question. Highest mountain in the UK? Yes. Perfect. Third one, capital of Latvia is? Yeah. Good. Where is the Adriatic Sea? Sea. Sí. Between Italy and Croatia. Correct. Next one, Madeira is? Oh. Good. And now it's a tough one, isn't it? What is the cheese? Where is the cheese from? Correct. The busiest passenger port is? Rotterdam. 
It's Dover. Ooh. Now, which country shares borders with both Russia and Romania? Sweden. Correct. What is the approximate population of Sweden? 10,000, correct? 10 million, sorry. Oh. Yes, you can write. Right. Now, this is the sea where I learned to swim. Where is that? What is that? The Baltic Sea, correct? The Roman aqueduct in southern France is? It's Pont du Gard. And this is the most beautiful flag in the whole wide world. <laughs> you may disagree, I don't mind. But it is the flag of? Sure. Correct. Uresund Bridge connects Denmark to? Yeah. Correct. What is the capital of Serbia? Yeah. You're really good. What is the name of the major river in Ireland? which flows through Dublin. Correct. Question number 16. Greenland has its own parliament, but is dependent on which country? Denmark. Denmark. And next one. Constantinople is known today as? Istanbul. Correct. Then we go to the Pyrenees. What is the country in the Pyrenees? Andorra. Correct. And next one. Again, who can say which country it is? Slovenia. Slovenia. And the next one is the coin of? Latvia. Perfect. You're so good. Bravo. Crumbs, that's very impressive. I think I only got about three. Now, let's, let's settle down. Settle down, please. We now move on to round two, so please pay attention. There are people still talking. They're going to make mistakes. This involves 15 questions for teams, and you may discuss your answers. You should have one blue answer sheet per team in front of you. Please write the name of your school at the top of your sheet. The first 10 questions are spoken language questions in German, Spanish, Italian, and French, followed by five general knowledge language questions in English. For the first five questions, you'll hear a short phrase or question spoken in different European languages, and these will appear in the order of German, Spanish, Italian, and French. You will be asked to identify what this means in English. You'll be glad to hear I'm not saying this. You'll hear the recording twice. After the second time, you'll be given a few moments to discuss the answer with your team. Write down your answer in English on your sheet. You may make notes at any time, but it's extremely important that you remain completely silent when you're listening to the voices. So here we go. What does this mean in English? Wie spät ist es? Que hora es? Que ore sono? Quelle heure est-il? Wie spät ist es? Que hora es? Que ore sono? Quelle heure est-il? Now write down your answer. Question two. 
What does this mean in English? Ich höre gern Musik. Me gusta escuchar música. Mi piace ascoltare música. J'aime écouter de la musique. Ich höre gern Musik. Me gusta escuchar música. Mi piace ascoltare música. J'aime écouter de la musique. Question 3. What does this mean in English? Mein Vater heißt Peter. Mi padre se llama Peter. Mio padre si chiama Peter. Mon père s'appelle Peter. Mein Vater heißt Peter. Mi padre se llama Peter. Mio padre si chiama Peter. Mon père s'appelle Peter. What does this mean in English? Question 4. Wo ist die Bibliothek? Donde está la biblioteca? Dov'è la biblioteca? Où est la bibliothèque? Wo ist die Bibliothek? Donde está la biblioteca? Dov'è la biblioteca? Où est la bibliothèque? A bit like University Challenge, they're all conferring with each other here, whispering. Houston, do we have lift off there? You're still conferring. Are we, are we ready? No, that's good. Number five. What does this mean in English? Wiederholen Sie das bitte. Repita, por favor. Repita. Per favore. Repetez, s'il vous plaît. Wiederholen Sie das bitte. Repita, por favor. Ripeta, per favore. Repetez, s'il vous plaît. Number six. What age is my best friend Martin? Mein bester Freund heißt Martin. Er ist 14 Jahre alt. Mi mejor amigo se llama Martin. Tiene 14 años. Il mio miglior amico si chiama Martin. Lui ha 14 anni. Mon meilleur ami s'appelle Martin. Il a 14 ans. Mein bester Freund heißt Martin. Er ist 14 Jahre alt. Mi mejor amigo se llama Martin. Tiene 14 años. Il mio miglior amico si chiama Martin. Lui ha 14 anni. Mon meilleur ami s'appelle Martin. Il a 14 ans.
Yes, I meant to say, which is my second deliberate mistake, is that you'll get the question in English and the answers will then be in German, Spanish, Italian and French. And you'll get to write down the answer in English. So the questions in English, the answers in the various languages, but your answer in English. So, number seven. What time does the football match start? Am Samstag gehen wir zum Fußballspiel. Das Spiel beginnt um 11.15 Uhr. Vamos al partido de fútbol el sábado. El partido empieza a las 11 y cuarto. Sabato andiamo ad una partita di calcio. La partita incomincia alle 11.15 Samedi, nous allons au match de foot. Le match commence à 11h15. Am Samstag gehen wir zum Fußballspiel. Das Spiel beginnt um 11.15 Uhr. Vamos al partido de fútbol el sábado. El partido empieza a las 11.15 Uhr. Sabato andiamo ad una partita di calcio. La partita incomincia alle 11:15. e 15. Samedi, nous allons au match de foot. Le match commence à 11h15. Number 8. What is Maria asking for? Ich habe Hunger. Darf ich bitte einen Apfel haben? Tengo hambre. ¿Puedo tomar una manzana, por favor? Ho oh, fame. ¿Potré avere una mela, por favor? J'ai faim. ¿Puedo avere una pomme, s'il vous plaît? Ich habe Hunger. ¿Darf ich bitte einen Apfel haben? Tengo hambre. ¿Puedo tomar una manzana, por favor? Ho oh, fame. ¿Potré avere una mela, por favor? J'ai faim. ¿Puedo avoir una pomme, s'il vous plaît? Number 9. Where does Rosa live? Ich heiße Rosa. Ich bin elf Jahre alt und ich wohne in Irland. Me llamo Rosa. Tengo once años y vivo en Irlanda. Mi chiamo Rosa. Ho undici anni e vivo in Irlanda. Je m'appelle Rosa. J'ai onze ans et j'habite en Irlande. Ich heiße Rosa. Ich bin elf Jahre alt und ich wohne in Irland. Me llamo Rosa. Tengo 11 años y vivo en Irlanda. Me llamo Rosa. Ho 11 anni y vivo en Irlanda. Je m'appelle Rosa. J'ai 11 ans y j'habite en Irlande. Last one in this group, number 10. Where does Amy like to go at the weekend? Ich gehe gern mit meinen Freunden ins Kino. Mein Lieblingsfilm heißt Moana. Me gusta ir al cine con mis amigos. Mi película preferida es Moana. Mi piace andare al cinema con i miei amici. Il mio preferito è Moana. J'aime aller au cinéma avec mes amis. Mon film préféré est Moana. Ich gehe gern mit meinen Freunden ins Kino. Mein Lieblingsfilm heißt Moana. Me gusta ir al cine con mis amigos. Mi película preferida es Moana. Mi piace andare al cinema con i miei amici. 
Il mio preferito è Moana. J'aime aller au cinéma avec mes amis. Mon film préféré est Moana. And now I'm going on to the last five questions, which are general knowledge language questions. These will be asked in English. They will be displayed on the screen behind me. I will ask each question twice. Please listen carefully, as they will not be repeated after this. This, this is question 11. This is counting from one to 10 in which language? This is counting from one to 10 in which language? I thought it was building blocks, but then I've noticed there's words beneath it. <laughs> Number 12. Huga, meaning feelings of coziness, comfort and wellness, has become a popular lifestyle trend originating from which country? Huga, meaning feelings of coziness, comfort and wellness, has become a popular lifestyle trend originating from which country? country. Number 13, Kamraig is the name of which European language? Kamraig is the name of which European language? How's the blue teddy bear doing? Is it getting the answers right? Is the blue teddy bear getting the answers right? We don't know. You think so? <laughs> Number 14. Name two official EU Romance languages. Name two official EU Romance languages. And number 15. Name an EU language that uses a different alphabet to the one used in English. Name an EU language that uses a different alphabet to the one used in English. Okie doke, I think we can stop right there and I can ask the teachers to collect in the papers for marking. Hold up your papers so the teachers can see them and then you can get your papers collected. Stop them changing their answers while they're chatting. Yes. Yeah. How are you doing up in the gallery? Are you getting them all right? Oh, of course you are, yes. <laughs> Now, can I invite uh, Cooley up to the lectern to give out the answers and all the people in the gallery can start ticking off the ones you got right so I can believe you. 
How was this round? Easy? Harder. Was it harder than the first round? Okay, shall we go through together? First question, what does this mean in English? And what is it? That's correct. What time is it? Next one, number two. What does this mean? That is the correct answer. I like listening to music. Third question. Who knows the answer? Shout it out. <laughs> correct. There's a good language skills in this group here. Okay. Fourth question. Who wants to say? <coughs> Where is the library? Correct? It's, it's a classic question, isn't it? The fifth one. Next one, number five. Will you repeat that, please? Thank you. Okay, repeat that, please. Next one, number six. That's where it got a little bit tougher, isn't it? How old is my best friend, Martin? Please. Correct. Next one, number seven. What time does the football match start? 11.15. Okay, what is Maria asking for? That is correct. She's hungry and she wants an apple. Next one, where does Rosa live? Correct. That was easy. Next one, where does Amy like to go at the weekend? That was also easy, wasn't it? Okay, and we switch to the last five questions. What language is this? Hungarian. Correct, it's Hungarian. Would you like me to read the numbers for you? Eight, get the hard on neck, at hot hit, nyolz kilens tees. I knew my Hungarian would come useful one day. Um, next one, hüke. What country does it come from? It's Denmark. <laughs> and shall we go to question number 13? Gumraig is Welsh, correct? Uh, question number 14, name two Romance languages. Can you name a few? Go ahead. You all know. Okay, if you got two, that's good. Shall we have the answers? French, Italian, Portuguese, Romanian, Spanish. And? Catalan? Catalan, yes. A language in its own right, yes. allowed to do that? Uh, I think yes. you agree that there is a language in its own right, yes? Okay, shall we go to question number 15? Excuse and me, can that be reflected in the marking that we've allowed Catalan is one of the Romance languages? Not allowed. What do we do? Okay, um, we'll take the next question. Name an EU language that uses a different alphabet to the one used in English. Greek, Greek and Bulgarian, correct? So that was the language round. Thank you very much, well done. We are double checking, I think it says official romance language, so we're double checking about Catalan. I don't want to get politically incorrect in the chair or get my ruckles na 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 hit, so, um, knuckles wrapped. So uh, we'll just check that out, please, if we can accept that. 
Um, now, next one. Move on to well. I have to say it's pretty close. Pretty close. A few teams in the lead, but lots of others not far behind. So although we're not going to announce where you are at this stage, everything to play for, teams. Everything to play for. So we now move on to the third and final round, round three, and then we'll know who our finalists are. So quietly and listen again so we don't make mistakes, because I make enough for both of us. This round will be 20 questions for you to answer in pairs, working with the person next to you, listen to the question. You can then discuss the answer, and one of you should write the answer on the answer sheet. You're not allowed to confer with the other pair in your team. Remember not to let the other pair in your team to hear what you're saying. You should have two pink answer sheets in front of you, one per pair. Please write the name of your school at the top of this sheet. I know this sounds obvious, but you might just make a mistake and we won't know whose answers they are. As with all previous rounds, the questions will be asked twice. Please listen carefully. The questions will also appear on the screen behind me. So here we go, last round. Number one. What was the nationality of the composer and pianist Ludwig van Beethoven? What was the nationality of the composer and pianist Ludwig van Beethoven? And I have to say, I'm afraid we can't accept Catalan because although it is a language in its own right, it's not the official language. So unfortunately, you can't. Whoever put that in, don't know who it was, uh, but we can't. Number two, what is the name of the Italian artist who created these paintings? What is the name of the artist, the Italian artist, who created these paintings? Number three, name any three countries which joined the EU in 2004. Name any three countries which joined the EU in 2004. Number four, in 1928, Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin, which is used to treat infections. Which country was he from? In 1928, Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin, which is used to treat infections. Which country was he from? Number five, what is the name of this traditional Hungarian casserole made with paprika? What is the name of this traditional Hungarian casserole made with paprika? Number six, what is the name of the bitter orange used to make marmalade named after a Spanish town? What is the name of the bitter orange used to make marmalade named after a Spanish town? Number seven, Odin, Thor, and Loki, who featured in popular Marvel films, are gods from which ancient mythology? 
Odin, Thor and Loki, who featured in popular Marvel films, are gods from which ancient mythology? Right? I know the answer to this one. How often do Scottish Parliament elections take place? How often do Scottish Parliament elections take place? Mr. Patterson knows this one as well. He does, he doesn't. <laughs> Too often. <laughs> Number nine. Patatas bravas, calamares, and la bomba are examples of which Spanish food tradition? Patatas bravas, calamares, and la bomba are examples of which Spanish food tradition? Actually, it sounds like a dance. I'm going to do la bomba. <laughs> I think there are parents in the gallery who can do la bomba. Number 10, I don't know the answer to this one. Midfielder Christian Eriksen plays football for Tottenham Hotspur. In which European country was he born? Midfielder Christian Eriksen plays football for Tottenham Hotspur. In which European country was he born? Number 11, what is the name of this Greek temple in Athens dedicated to the goddess Athena? What is the name of this Greek temple in Athens dedicated to the goddess Athena? Number 12, name a country which is not in the EU but is part of the Schengen area. Name a country which is not in the EU but is part of the Schengen area. Number 13, Sigrid sings the song Strangers and won the BBC Music Sound of 2018 award. Which European country is she from? Sigrid sings the song Strangers and won the BBC Music Sound of 2018 award. Which European country is she from? Moving on, 14. Is that all right? Do you want me to move on? You're still thinking? I'll stop thinking, good. 14, name two Scottish MEPs, members of the European Parliament. Name two Scottish MEPs, please. Number 15, Alessandro Volta, 1745 to 1827, was an Italian physicist. Which of the following did he invent? A, the battery, B, the light bulb, C, the electric plug and socket. Alessandro Volta was an Italian physicist. Which of the following did he invent? The battery, 
the light bulb or the electric plug and socket. That's not as easy as it looks. Who in the gallery thinks they've got the right answer? Put your hand up. Ah, well, well not many. We'll find out. Good job mums and dads and parents and carers aren't doing this, isn't it? Maybe we should make them do it next time as well. What do you think? And see how they get on in the gallery. 16. In which European country was the confectionery company Haribo founded in 1920? In which European country was the confectionery company Haribo founded in 1920? I bet you've eaten them, but where was it founded? <laughs> You'll have them. Not good for your food, just sugar. Number 17, Smorbrod is an open sandwich popular in which European country? Smorbrod is an open sandwich popular in which European country? Number 18, the European Commission's Green Capital Award is awarded to large cities which act as role models for other cities for A, economic growth, B, environmentally friendly urban living, or C, attracting tourism. The European Commission's Green Capital Award is awarded to large cities which act as role models for other cities in terms of economic growth, or environmentally friendly urban living, or attracting tourism, which? Number 19. Secret Sassoon, Wilfred Owen, and Robert Graves were English poets who wrote about which war? Secret Sassoon, Wilfred Owen, and Robert Graves were English poets who wrote about which war? And last one in this round. Which European country won the most medals in the 2018 Pyongyang Winter Olympics. Which European country won the most medals in the 2018 Pyongyang Winter Olympics? I think that's us. If you hold up your papers, please, for the markers to collect your papers. And then you can chat amongst yourselves. Okay, now, if you settle down, because you get a wee break in a minute, 
Okay, could you come up and give you the answers? Was this the hardest round yet? Yes. So let's have a look together. Question number one was about the composer Ludwig van Beethoven. And where does he come from? Germany. Germany. That's correct. He was German. Second question. Who painted these paintings? Perfect. Question number three. How many countries joined? Ten. And you can probably name all ten of them. So give me a few. Okay, I've heard some right answers and some wrong answers, worryingly. However, so the, here they are. Cyprus, Czech Republic, Estonia, Hungary, Latvia, Lithuania, Malta, Poland, Slovakia, and Slovenia. If you got three of them, you're good. No, no. Just quieten down a minute. You're not going to hear the answers. You get a break in a wee minute, right? Okay. Please go on. Question number four was about Alexander Fleming, who discovered penicillin, and he comes from... Correct. Question number five was about Hungarian casserole. Goyash. Correct. Good. And next one was about oranges. They come from Seville. Seville oranges. Question number seven. From which ancient mythology are these gods? From Norse mythology, that's correct. Question number eight, about the Scottish Parliament elections. How often? Five years, that's correct. Can you confirm? Can I, can I just say those who left the room, those who got it wrong, leave the room now. We can't have that. Did you hear that? Okay, behave. Question number nine. Patatas bravas, calamares, and la bomba are examples of which Spanish food tradition? <laughs> Correct. You know your food. Midfielder Christian Eriksen is from what country? <laughs> Good. I didn't know that. Okay, question number 11. The Greek temple in Athens is dedicated to the goddess of Athena is called Parthenon. That's correct. Question number 12. Name a country which is not in the European Union but which is part of the Schengen area. Switzerland. Switzerland. More? Oh, you see all the answers already. <laughs> These are all also part of the European Free Trade Association, or EFTA. You see EFTA in the news lately or not, so you now know. Question number 13. The talented Sigrid is from what country? Norway. She's from Norway. Now, we go back closer to home, name two Scottish members of the European Parliament. Did you get any? Alan Smith, correct. Shall we have the answers? I'll let you have a wee look. Okay. We move on to question number 15. Alessandro Volta invented the, the battery, correct. Question number 16. In which European country was the confectionery company Haribo founded? You think about it every time you finish your whole packet, right? That it's from Germany. I bet. And the name comes from after Hans Riegel and Bonn, where it's headquartered. So it's Hans Riegel and Bonn, uh, all the first syllables. Question number 17. Smarrebrode is an open sandwich popular in which country? Denmark. Denmark. You know food questions wrong, correct? That's good. 
Question number 18. The European Commission's Green Capital Award is awarded to the large cities who act as role models for other cities in terms of? B. B. Yes, environmentally friendly urban living. Question number 19. Siegfried Sassoon, Wilfred Owen and Robert Graves were poets who wrote about which war? World War I is the correct answer. And finally, which European country won the most medals at the 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympics? Norway. Norway. Well done, everyone. Right, just, just for a moment, please, quiet then, we have a break. Now, that's the end of the first three rounds. I'm sure you'll all want to know your scores, but while the papers are being marked for the final time, we will have a short break. And get out of your seats, not right now, but when I tell you. If you'd like a drink of water, please move to the back of the room where water is available. You need to go to the toilet, go out through the door at the back of the chamber, and the event assistants will help you. So please be back here, and there are clocks. You must be back in here in your seats by 2 30. Thank you.